Hey there everyone and welcome back. I'm sure you've seen these funny looking integer counters in a math class and maybe you even found them a bit confusing to use. I know I did when I was a math student, so let's dive in together and figure it out. Let's start with positive 3 times negative 2. Now, what I find important to do as a teacher is to first show my students what all of these math symbols really mean. So let's look at this positive 3 first. The positive 3 here means to add 3. The multiplication sign means groups of, and the negative 2 is just negative 2. Now let's take a look at these counters. What do they mean? Well, the yellow counter is equal to positive 1, and the red counter is equal to negative 1. The next step is to use the counters to represent the words in the math sentence, which says to add three groups of negative 2. Since the 2 is negative, I will need to use the red or negative counters. So here is my first group of negative 2, the second group of negative 2, and finally the third group of negative 2. And that's it. All I need to do now is count the number of red counters I have, which is 6, and my final answer is negative 6 because the counters are negative. So positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Now that wasn't so confusing. Now don't let this one scare you. I'm going to start by writing the math sentence using words for the symbols again. The negative sign here in this first term means to remove, and the 2 means 2, so we have remove 2. The multiplication sign still means groups of, and the negative 2 is just negative 2. So we have remove 2 groups of negative 2. But we have a problem here at the moment because how can we remove counters when we don't have any to remove? The solution is to start with enough zero pairs so that you can remove two groups of negative 2. A zero pair is a special type of pair where two numbers add up to zero. For example, let's take the numbers positive 1 and negative 1. If you add them together, you get zero. So these two numbers form a zero pair because their sum is zero. To make zero pairs using counters, we'll replace the positive one with a yellow counter and the negative one with a red counter. Going back to our problem here and ignoring the negative signs for just a moment, I see that I need a set of zero pairs to represent two groups of two. So here is my first group of two and now my second group of two. Now I'll go back and read the math sentence again. Remove two groups of negative 2. Once I remove these four negative counters, you can see that there are four positive counters left. So my answer is positive 4. I can feel your confidence growing. So now it would be a great stopping point to pause the video and try this one on your own. Remember to write the math sentence using the words representing the math symbols before you start using the counters. Okay, let's start by writing the math sentence using words. The negative 2 stands for remove 2. The multiplication sign means groups of, and the positive 3 is just positive 3. Here again, I don't have any counters to remove, so I will need to ignore the negative sign for a moment and use zero pairs to represent two groups of 3. Now I'm able to remove two groups of positive 3. And as you can see, there are six negative counters left. So the answer is negative six. Now that you understand how to use the counters to find the answer, let's identify a pattern. In the first problem, I multiplied a positive number to a negative number, and the answer was negative. Then I multiplied a negative number to another negative number, and the answer was positive. For the third problem, I multiplied a negative number to a positive number, and the answer was negative. And of course, you already know that if you multiply two positive numbers, your answer will be positive. These four patterns show the rules for multiplying positive and negative numbers. Instead of using counters this time, let's just use the rules. Are you feeling confident? Then pause the video and answer these on your own. The first problem here is positive 12 times negative 2. A positive times a negative always results in a negative answer. 
so the answer is negative 24. The second problem is a negative 4 times negative 2. A negative times another negative always results in a positive answer, so the answer here is positive 8. This last problem is negative 7 times positive 3. Again, a negative number times a positive one always results in a negative answer. So the answer to this last problem is negative 21. I bet you did a great job solving these problems on your own. I hope this lesson was a confidence booster, and I'll see you in the next video.